He's an icon. Just one word says it all. Hendrix. That's right. But, you know, there's a photo of the musician taken decades ago here in D.C. It's never been seen publicly until now. News 4's Mark Seagraves tells us just how Jimi Hendrix made rock and roll history one Sunday night in Adams Morgan. Today, it's the Songbird Music House in Adams, Morgan. But 50 years ago, this was the Showboat Lounge, and people like Jimi Hendrix would hang out here. And 50 years ago, Hendrix made rock and roll history right across the street. I'd consider that picture that you found in D.C. of him setting his guitar on fire to be part of the holy grail of lost artifacts because, like I mentioned earlier, nobody believed that it happened. So it was just sort of that legend, but the fact that it's now seen that it happened changes everything about it, how we think about, especially the year of 1967 for Hendrix. That Bill Bentley, author of Smithsonian Rock and Roll Live and Unseen, a compilation of rock photos taken by fans, is talking about this picture. Jimi Hendrix holding his burning guitar above his head on August 13th, 1967 at the Ambassador Theater in Washington, D.C. Hendrix burning his guitar has long been a part of D.C. legend, but until now, there had never been a picture of it. The Ambassador Theater was a psychedelic rock venue that opened in the summer of 1967 and went out of business six months later. But during its brief existence, the Ambassador was home to many of the top rock acts of the 60s. Hendrix's five-night stand at the Ambassador came two weeks before his first album was released. National broadcaster Bill Wood was a 16-year-old aspiring rock musician in 1967. He was in the front row for two of the shows, including the last night when Hendrix burned his guitar. And then he picks it up and he whacks it on the stage and the neck comes off and chunks of wood are flying out. But a string broke, as they're prone to do, and it came flying and it hit me right in the chest. And so I reached down, I picked it up, and I coiled it up, and I put it in my pocket. And they had a... Brian Fisher was also in the front row on that final night, but he and others at the Ambassador had started their night across town at DAR Constitution Hall, where pop band Herman's Hermits were performing. The opening act for that show was The Who. Fisher, who was working for the local TV show Wingding at the time, was backstage with The Who and still has Keith Moon's drumstick from that show. He says Pete Townsend asked him about the Hendrix concert across town. So John Entwistle, myself, and, and uh, Pete Townsend, we went to the uh, Ambassador Theater, which was in, on Columbia Road. We sat right in the front. It was just unbelievable. That's right, two of the members of The Who were in the audience for Hendrix's final show at the Ambassador, sitting on the floor with all the other fans. It wasn't packed. It was a decent crowd, but it certainly wasn't wasn't wall to wall people. There were no chairs at the ambassador. You just sat on the floor. As a matter of fact, Dr. Virginia Vertez was also in the audience in the Ambassador Theater for Hendrix's five shows. On at least one of those nights, the 18-year-old Vertez brought her Kodak Instamatic camera and took these pictures. Two of Hendrix performing, and this one when she met him backstage. I had just said hi, and he said hi, and so I took a nice picture of him. After the shows at the Ambassador, Vertes gave some of her prints of the pictures to friends, and then she went off to college. I had kind of forgotten about one of them. But when she was approached about a 50th anniversary reunion for the Ambassador Theater, one of her friends reminded her that she had taken a fourth picture, the picture of Hendrix holding a flaming guitar over his head. I no longer ha had any prints, but I knew I had negatives somewhere because I never threw away my negatives, even though I've moved maybe at least 50 times in these 50 years. So Dr. Virginia Vertes began searching through her decades of memories, looking for that night in 1967. I didn't know how I was gonna find this negative, so I, I, I thought, this is, this is impossible. But deep in a hall closet, in a cardboard box filled with thousands of other negatives, she found the four original negatives from that historic night of August 13th, 1967, when Jimi Hendrix lit his guitar on fire for only the third time known to rock historians, and only the second time caught on film. This picture, forgotten for 50 years, was now found. Well, I'll tell you, if, if that's the way it went down, you can't make that stuff up. Altogether, it just makes it 
like a real moment in rock and roll history that I think people will talk about forever. It was uh, surreal, actually, thinking back on it today. It's burned in my memory. I mean, literally, my view, it was, I was probably dangerously close as far as my ears went, but it was just, it was one of those moments kind of frozen in time. I was just a spectator to something pretty special. That's wow. amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> How did you find her? So, hat tip to Jeff Krulik, the documentary filmmaker. It was his idea to have this celebration, 50-year reunion of the ambassador. When he started calling people, he got in touch with Dr. Vertes, and that got the ball rolling. That's why she started looking for the picture. That's why she found it, and that's why we're going to be able to see it. That reunion and, and celebration is open to the public. It's Saturday, October 28th at the Songbird Theater, which is the old showboat lounge. Fun. And so, what's this I'm hearing about you having a personal connection to that, that performance yourself? Well, so, back in the 1960s and 70s, my father, was the music critic for the Washington Star newspaper and he reviewed not only one of Hendrix's show, the Hendrix show the next year at the Hilton Hotel, but he also did a review of the uh, theater, the, the, the uh, Ambassador Theater. Uh, spoiler alert, he didn't like either one of them. I'm looking uh, at his he, quotes. Yeah. 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 He said you couldn't, hear, you couldn't hear <laughs> Hendrix sing, it was just blatant noise, the, the guitar playing was indistinguishable. Then when he went over to the, the Ambassador Theater, uh, he, he said that was a dank and odorous and it was noisy, and he, the one thing that he was correct about the ambassador is that it wouldn't last, and that it would be closed within a year. <laughs> it actually closed within six months, and he closed his article by dubbing it Yonsville Baby. <laughs> wow. So you can send your cards and letters to me <laughs> on behalf of my father. Uh, but this is, this that, is the Seagraves mea culpa star. on that one, yeah. <laughs> no accounting for it's taste. It's still a great yeah. story. Great that story, going crazy. back in time. What is she doing yeah. with the pictures? Is she going to you sell know, them? Or? She's well, approached. She? I actually talked to the Hendrix estate. They're very interested in these pictures. But, you know, she's not looking to get rich or she just she wants can. to hold on to them. And she's going to display these, the four pictures. She's put mm -hmm. them into an art piece and it's framed. And she's going to be displaying this at the celebration at the Songbird, October 28th, mm -hmm. the afternoon, that Saturday afternoon. Uh, it's going to be a great day. A lot of musicians, a lot wow. of people, a lot of history, a lot of all those people, you know, haven't been together that we saw on this piece yeah. for 50 years and Those don't actually times. know one another. So. Those were good yeah. times when she saw yeah. Hendrix before Woodstock. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, good story, good stuff. Finding Thanks. negatives 50 years later, yeah. that's just amazing.